hello there you are welcome to another lesson in science and today we'll be looking at the topic introduction to biology now at the end of the lesson learners should be able to describe the concept biology describe biology as a science state the branches of biology and occupations related to biology describe the scientific process in the study of biology now moving along we are going to be answering the question what is biology now, biology is the study of life the word biology is derived from two greek words bios meaning life and logos meaning study so biology is defined as the systematic study of living organisms their origins anatomy morphology physiology behavior and distribution so in general biology study the structure function growth origin evolution and distribution of living organisms now biology is important because it helps us to understand how living things work and how they function and interact on multiple levels now if you look at what we have here what we have here simply describes what biology means so biology can also be described as the science of life and living organisms so biology is the natural science discipline that studies living things now biology covers diverse fields of study such as botany ecology marine biology and microbiology now moving along we'll be going deep into the branches of biology now we have two um, two pictures here that shows the branches of biology now the first one here shows the three branches of biology one is botany which describes the study of plants one is zoology which describes the study of animals and microbiology which describes the study of microorganisms and under each branch we have other specialized study like mycology um, horticulture ethnobotany these are all under botany which is the study of plants now under zoology we have ornithology epithology anatomy physiology all these fall under zoology now under microbiology we have bacteriology mycology phycology nematology immunology and so on now we have the um, other branches of biology right here we have anatomy which is the physical structure of animals biochemistry which describes the chemistry of living things botany which describes the study of the structure and function of plants cytology which describes the structure and function of cells ecology interactions of organisms and the environment and it goes on and on and on so these are the various branches in biology now we're going to look next at biology as the scientific and the scientific method biology and the scientific method now a biology investigation usually starts with an observation that is something that catches the biologist's attention for instance the biology might notice that some plants do not grow well in a certain region or area so how do biologists follow up on these observations how can you follow up on your own observations of the natural world now we're going to go through the scientific method which is a logical problem solving approach used by biologists and many other scientists so if you look at it here this picture right here describes the scientific method and the steps so here it says that the scientific method is a serial series of steps to collect information or solve problems now we start with observation now after after observation generally you ask questions then afterwards you formulate hypothesis you carry out experimentation you do your data analysis from the result of the experimentation and you come up with your own conclusion now what you have here are other steps because the scientific method these are the basic steps but based on the kind of um, on the kind of um, science that we are dealing with here we have natural science biological science we have uh, we have um, chemical science and so on physical sciences now this one here is another um, step which describes the scientific method depending on um, the kind of um, discipline that, that you are dealing with it may differ one way or the other but they generally have the same uh, results at the end of the day 
so here you have ask a question do background research construct a hypothesis test your hypothesis by doing an experiment analyze your data and draw a conclusion report your results now we are going to be applying the scientific method even to solve a part or to answer a particular question now it starts with observation now we want to know what uh, what kind of fertilizer will make our plants to grow properly so this is what we have observed that we need a fertilizer to grow this particular plant that is what we have observed so now we need to come up with the question what type of fertilizer works the best from your observation you noted that you need a fertilizer a fertilizer for your plant to grow now we are going to the question which is asking that what type of fertilizer or which type of fertilizer works the best that's the question now we need to formulate an hypothesis now we got three kinds of what fertilizers three different kinds of fertilizer fertilizer a fertilizer b and fertilizer c and our hypothesis read reads thus plants grown with fertilizer a will grow the fastest so this is our hypothesis now we need to test our hypothesis by carrying out an experiment so we got three you know three pots having three identical pots abc having the same soil and we are growing the same plant but the only difference is that we are using different words fertilizer now the fertilizer that we are using here is the independent variable so that is the one that we are going to change in these three um, you know three different words um, plants or potted um, plants that we want to have but the other conditions will be exactly the same for instance we'll use the same amount of water we will expose them to the to equal amounts of sunlight and we're going to use the same type of soil but the independent variable the one the factor that we are then that is going to be different which will determine our outcome would just be the different types of fertilizer for pot a we are using fertilizer a for pot b we are using fertilizer b for pot c we are look, we are using fertilizer c now after we plant this after some days we observe the growth level of plant a plant b and plant c this is the dependent variable this is the outcome the dependent variable here is how fast they grow that is the outcome that is determined by the independent variable which is the different kinds of fertilizer that we use we'll look at this concept of variable in the next slide but from the result here you can see that the plant a here grew taller than the rest of the plants plant b didn't grow too tall plant c didn't grow too tall as well so from the result we can observe that when we use fertilizer a the plants grew very fast and tall so which brings us to our conclusion our conclusion will determine whether our hypothesis was correct or our hypothesis was wrong but in this case as you can see from the results here that our hypothesis a is correct so therefore we can conclude that plants grown with fertilizer a will definitely grow the fastest that is the conclusion that we came up with so this is one of the simple ways by which we can put the scientific method to work now moving along we'll be looking at the experimentation proper we'll be looking at the experimentation proper now in designing an experiment the specific question or questions that the experiment is meant to answer must first be clearly defined just as we saw in our previous slide um, asking the question that which fertilizer will be used um, to make the plants grow faster your question needs to be what very clear now in this case the independent variable and dependent variable must also be identified since the goal of a designed experiment is to understand how one variable affects another now in the example that we used earlier in the previous slide the independent variable here will be the fertilizer use while the dependent variable here is talking about the outcome whether the plants grew um, fastest or grew slow or yes how fast the plants grew will be our dependent variable so changing the factor using different types of fertilizer will determine how fast the plant grew now a simple experiment should have only one independent variable in the last example the independent variable was the fertilizer used all other factors that could have affected that could have an effect on the outcome 
of the experiment must be controlled or held constant. In this case, for the previous example, the um, amount of sunlight, water, and the soil used, we controlled that and we held that to be constant because it was the same for all the three plants except for the fertilizer used. In addition, one group in the experiment should be a control group. A designated group used as a comparative reference point. In this case, fertilizer B and C was used. This group will not have a manipulated independent variable. Now, looking at this picture here, you can see when we talk about independent variable, it describes the one thing you change. In other words, the limit to one limits to only one in an experiment now in the case of this experiment now the question that we are asking is what what particular liquid will help these plants grow what particular liquid will help these plants grow very well so the independent variable is the kind of liquid that we used which as you can see you have juice you have uh, you have juice you have three different kinds of liquid so the liquid used in this plant here plant abc is the independent variable because that is the factor that we change we still use the same plant the same soil the same amount of sunlight and water these ones will be constant in this particular experiment now as you can see the example of the independent variable is the liquid used to water each plant now the dependent variable describes the change that happens because of the independent variable now example of the independent vari dependent variable here is the height or health of the plant this is the outcome that we want to determine from manipulating the independent was variable now the controlled variable talks about everything you want to remain constant and unchanging in this case the type of the plant used the pot size amount of liquid soil type uh, sunshine and so on they are the controlled words variable so the independent variable is is this we will determine the kind of liquid that will help the plant um, grow properly that will indicate the one that has the highest um, height or the one that has um, the favorable health for the plant now moving on after we've done the experiment we need to report our experiment now when reporting an experiment it is important to state the following the title aim apparatus method or procedure observation or results conclusion and precautions now this and this is a sample of a lab report format so when whenever a scientist carries out his um, his or her inquiry and after experiments have been done he needs to articulate or report the experiment in such a way that any other person that looks at the report will be able to do exactly the same thing that the scientists had done and produce exactly the same result and that is why we need to report um, our experiment after we are done now moving along we'll be talking about the characteristics of life now biology is the branch of science concerned with the study of living things organisms biologists have identified traits common to all living organisms that we know although non-living things may show some of these properties in order for something to be considered living it must meet all of them number one is organization which talks about living things being highly organized and are made up of one or more cells the second one is metabolism which describes um, that living things must use energy and consume nutrients to carry out chemical reactions that sustain life the sum total of the biochemical reactions occurring in an organism is called its metabolism the third characteristic is homeostasis which describes um, the ability of living organisms to regulate their internal environment we are the next one is growth which describes the fact that living organisms must grow must undergo regulated growth by increasing in size and the cell also increasing through cell division another one is reproduction which describes the ability of living organisms to reproduce offspring of the same kind now we are looking at another characteristic here which is response which describes the living organisms ability to respond to stimuli or changes in their environment then finally we are looking at evolution which describes the population of living organisms 
which can undergo evolution in other words uh, the genetic makeup can change over a period time now this is a, a, a pictorial representation of what it means for an uh, for a living organism to be alive all the um, things that will that you have to observe in a living organism to determine whether it is alive or not now with this we've come to the end of our lesson introduction to biology now we quick look at the summary biology is defined as the scientific study of living organisms their origins anatomy morphology physiology behavior and distribution all the knowledge of biology is gotten through the scientific method the scientific method is a logical problem solving approach used by biologists and many other scientists this comprises of observation asking questions hypothesis experimentation results data analysis and conclusion when reporting an experiment it is important to state the following title aim apparatus method or procedure observation or result conclusion and precaution now at this point i wanted to pause this video and answer this question to see how much of the lesson that you have imbibed and i'll see you again in the next lesson bye bye